Hello everybody and welcome back to How Hard Can It Be? I'm Phil Murphy and this dusty little creature is a Nauticus 27 foot and together we are struggling and battling to get this baby back on the water hopefully this year. Now the immediate issues is we're going to be concentrating on doing the furniture. Now in previous episodes when I've said what I'm going to do some of it I've done and some of it I haven't and that is because it's the first time I've done this as you well know and more often than not you come across other issues that need to be addressed before things that I go and say. So I'm going to cut that out in future and I'm just going to concentrate on immediates and we go with the flow. So speaking of immediates, cue that music and let's get on with this. Right, so one sad looking cabinet, as you can see, it is pretty manky. And I've been tossing and turning on deciding whether to salvage these or not. So what I've done is I have stripped one of these down, which was virtually identical, because in the very, very few uh, early episodes, I may have mentioned that at the Sometime in its life, the back end of the boat was submerged by about two feet. And as you can see, here, this obviously took some of the water. Now, structurally, it's pretty good, but cosmetically, it's looking pretty awful. That door is warped uh, and, well, as you can see, one of these has disappeared. It's pretty manky inside. So, I'll show you what I did to the other one, and then you can decide, as well as me, whether we salvage it. So, with the door off, big round of applause, everybody. Twist it around so we can see it. I will. I'm just explaining something in a minute first. Oh, okay. As you can see, this has got three shelves. And these are now nice and sturdy. I had some of this ply at the back and I chopped uh, some into position and put it in. Everywhere is nicely sanded. Obviously, I've still got the residue of where the old lights used to be. But... A day's worth of sanding, we end up with what I think is a half decent carcass. You can see at the back, once we put it back in, that should be good to go. It's all nicely uh, structured. The wood is solid at the bottom. It's pretty parallel, I can show you the top, like so. So what are we going to do with it? Well, originally I thought I could reface it in oak, but I had this up there, as you'll probably know, and I've also got another piece up there which I've also sanded, which I shall show you shortly. Um, and I looked and I decided there was way too much wood. So I've come to the conclusion, and I don't think it's going to cause me any problems other than using up a bit more time and that is I'm going to use a good quality paint and I'm going to paint them. Now don't rattle your cage and don't jump out and say don't be glossy and everything. I know I won't be doing any of that. I'm going to use a good quality paint. I'm going to use a matte finish and I'm going to use one of my favourite uh, companies Farrow and Ball and they've got some really nice colours in them. The houses that I've had in the past I've always used their paint and I've always been uh, really pleased with what they do. So that is what I'm going to do and I'm going to use one of these carcasses as a tester and we're going to see what it looks like. So that's what I'm going to do. But I, before I can do that I'm going to have to completely sand 
everything. So that is virtually done, apart from the fact that you can see I've used some wood filler. And once it's sanded and everything's nice and neat, then we can give it a coat of paint. Now, what else have I been doing? Well, last episode, you know that I did all the uh, lining. There is a part of it that you won't have seen yet, and that is at the very front where the windows are. I've now done the sides, and I've also done the front end of the boat, and I've also replaced some of the ply, of which you will see in this episode, I think. So, uh, I don't know what to say now. What should we do? Do we go up there and show them, or do I just get on with the work? Let's have a quick look. All right then, we'll do that. See you shortly. Okay, so we've nipped a board, and I'm just gonna show you what I've done prior to um, we shutting off the last episode. So, as you can see, this is now double layered, and this is virtually ready for what we decide we're gonna put on here, and I think it's gonna be ply. You'll note that I haven't taken the uh, liner right up to the edge because importantly we've obviously got the uh, rubber seals for the windows uh, to go around here so the bit that you won't have seen is of course we've done that um, this was missing so I've used ply to redo this to match that side uh, for the new wood fill it down both sides there because the ones that were there were a bit rickety and I don't want that. So as I'm pinning it, we don't want it moving in any way and we don't want it rattling. So this is well and truly insulated. Uh, fingers crossed it's gonna do the job really well. Underneath here, what you won't see is now some uh, conduit ready for the cables to go in. Uh, I've just put a, a oak fillet on there. And why I, why I decided to go the paint route is when I got this, I just wanted to make sure that everything still fit because this is obviously an original piece and an original shape to the uh, old part of the boat. I wanted to make sure that when I put this new one on here, it didn't interfere with this. So I just tried it out and that's basically how it is and it segregates the, the bedroom side of it to the dining side of it. And that cupboard that you saw me restoring, it just fits in here. So, as you can see, it's all wood. And I thought maybe, maybe we could start lightening this place up a bit by um, using some uh, quality paint. If it doesn't work and it looks like a cheap job, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. But if it does, I can always play over the top of it. So it's not, you know, it's paint. So that's it, that's it up to now. Lots of things gone on in here that you generally you can't see, but uh, we are well on course now to getting uh, the ply sorted here. I think we're gonna be obviously gonna have to start wearing at some stage. I'm dreading that, but you know, we've got to start doing that because we can't move for forward on this boat until we do get the wiring in. Uh, so I think now it's a case of going back down there and continuing doing some sanding. So that's what I'm going to do. Enjoy it. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be there, are you? So, but you're thinking, oh, he's back. You're right, I am back. It's been about four weeks, actually. A uh, bit of illness and an already booked holiday for two weeks. So we are way behind schedule, uh, but that's unfortunate. But guess what? Weather's changed, we're outside, things are looking up, and I've also done some work. And I'm just gonna show you now what I've done up to now. So, as you know, part of this episode, you would see a right ramshackle state of affairs with these particular boxes. These are now looking in better shape. So we've got new backs, air vent at the bottom so it allows air to circulate if we're going to put clothes in there and of course new shelf all sanded down areas like that are neatly filled in they just need a complete finished sander uh, sorry not finished sander that just needs sanding and filling and then that's good to go for paint 
show you the reverse because that's exactly the same on the other side. So those two are near enough ready to go. So as you can see, I've just strengthened this uh, with a, a section on here because this was a little bit on the rickety side. So that box now is completely sanded. As you can see, it's got a new, uh, new bottom in it. Uh, so that's really ready to go. Uh, and I'm right this moment, I'm on with sorting out one of the worst boxes. As you can see, that is the top, that's the top of this. Um, but this took quite a lot of um, water damage and I wanted to keep it all the same anyway. So I'm basically now cutting new sections to go here and then we'll put a new bottom in. Once it's painted, it'll all be good to go. So what have we got to do after we've sorted these? There are two boxes left that are drawer units, um, which we'll probably get onto the next episode, I would have thought. Uh, but at this moment in time, this is what I'm concentrating on, is um, making this box and um, hopefully we can move on to maybe primering and getting these uh, ready. So um, that's what I'm going to do. So stay tuned. So last night, the final hole, um, I uh, put um, a ply uh, section in there. And the reason why I've masked it is because I used wood glue on the other side and obviously there was gaps and it just saves me um, sanding the glue down. Uh, it just acts as a, like a barrier for the, for the glue. So I use this uh, sandpaper. Obviously it's not, I can't see that it's come through but as you can see that is nice and solid. Uh, ready for filling uh, and we're ready to go. So I'm going to get on with the uh, box down here and make that up uh, and then hopefully it'll all look to this standard. So stay tuned. Okay, so box building. Started cutting some ply up. So I've got the first section. Um, original ply was no more than about uh, four mil thick and it was really flimsy. Uh, you'll notice that there's a rebate there for the 4mm. I've decided to go 9mm. Uh, because, simply because I think it'll just add to the rigidity of it. Uh, and so all I need to do now do is cut the back section and then we can then start putting it together. I will put some reinforced fillets all the way around, make a frame or something like that, like the, uh, the original. Uh, to give it strength on the bottom uh, but all this will be painted so it doesn't have to be made of the same material um, it just needs to be strong enough so I'm just going to cut some of this 9mm ply up a bit of a flat sander which has been very handy.
So basically, we've got a rough sized box. We'll make the framework, put the base in, and then we'll be. Uh, it will be. It's possibly a little bit higher. But well, we can mess about with that. That'll be fine. I'm happy with that. So I shall continue. What am I saying? Oh, by the way, John's redundant. <laughs> I'm going to say editing skills. What am I saying now? I don't know, but get on with it because we're running. Welcome back. The last time you saw this, it was in a real sorry state. But now, I'm pleased to say, it isn't. So that's the original side, that's the original side, and that's the original side. And what I did is I sanded it, and it literally fell to pieces, as you know. But now... We have... One solid box. Very pleased to say that is ready for very little filling actually. That's going to be filled, sanded and that is going to be painted like the rest. So that is a good salvaged box that will fit where it needs to fit. And this is the whole reason we're we'll keeping all this furniture is because it is, it's, it looks like I'm wasting the time restoring this that and the other but actually it's going to save me a lot of time in the long run by making new stuff so i'm very pleased so that's what that looks like i have a lid somewhere where's the lid there two sets there we go freshly sanded lid on all sides and that just fits in there and there we go so that's done uh, so that's it. Yes, shall we get on with the episode as well? Yeah, I think we should. Uh, I need to just answer a question before I forget. I've got my notes here, uh, and it's for Amy Lonsdale, and I hope I've got that name right, Amy. If it is Amy, it's a, it came up as your account, uh, and it's reference to window seals. So I bought about four years ago some window seals for this boat, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not so sure whether these window seals that I have got are going to fit because I have altered the ply depth on the interior from the original because I thought they were a little bit on the thin side. So, I bought some window seals and I bought them from a company in the UK called Seals Plus Direct and they're based in the UK. The particular type that I'm going to show you is Clayton Wright and this is model WR61. They also do a WR1307. They're roughly between 365 a meter uh, and five pounds a meter, uh, English pounds that is. Uh, they come in three mil and they come in 3.75 and 4.75. But if you go on Seals Plus Direct Co. UK and then click on what I'm about to show you, you'll see what I mean and it'll give you all the information that you need. Now, whether they are available in Turkey or not, I really don't know. But if you want me to try and help you get some from over here to there, I'm, I'm happy to help you on that one. So, that is the side profile of what it is. And if I can maybe just adjust it to the correct way that it's meant to go, uh, that would be the interior, and this would be the exterior, I think. There is a little um, star-shaped um, rubber um, seal that goes in there that you need to use a tool, but there again, you will see that on the website. Um, this is the bit that I'm concerned about um, the width between there and there and there and there. I think that's the that's the one that goes on to the uh, the fiberglass, uh, and I think that's the one that opens up that way. 
uh, and takes the uh, ply and the fiberglass side of the boat as well. In fact, they both do. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that's the those are the two bits that I'm concerned about. So I may have bought the uh, the incorrect depth, but we'll wait and see. We'll find that out. But that's the sort of product that was on the boat to start with, and. I've just basically bought the same thing again because it obviously worked before. So that's that. You also asked about the paint and that was whether it was polyurethane. So I've had a, a look at the information on the back. Uh, it doesn't mention polyurethane, but what it does do, it clearly states that it's yacht enamel. And for reference, the color of this boat is Oxford blue and that's the hull as you can see Oxford blue it goes on well as I've no doubt that you would have looked in previous episodes what you haven't seen yet uh, and there's not on the boat until this weather gets better um, ivory is the color that I've chosen I'm hoping it's going to blend quite nicely with uh, the blue and that is going to be going on the gray areas that you can see in the distance there so that's it, they're both enamel. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, I will try and list them down below uh, on the, uh, uh, at the end, but uh, John and myself, uh, not that familiar in how to do that, but if it's there, it's there. But at least I've told you what it is on, on film. So there we go. Right, with that out of the way, it's sanding time. A bit boring, but I'm sure We'll whisk through it. Before I sand, <coughs> this is for William's benefit. William, I have a round sander. Circular sander. Orbital. Orbital sander. Now, it's a good one. And I used to like using it, but two reasons why I don't like using an orbital sander. One is it creates vibrations up my arm and I get tennis elbow on a regular basis and it causes havoc with that. Secondly, I have always liked my rectangle sander. And whenever I've used it on any of the work that I've done, I'm extremely satisfied with the finish that I've got. So I'm going to continue using this. Now, it could be the right or the wrong way, but I know, for me, it's the right way. And I get a flat surface when I require it. Obviously, if I'm dealing with a circular, uh, a spheric, or whatever you call it, surface, then I can't use that. But for what I need it for, this is what I'm going to use. So that's for you, with. Right, I'm going to use it. Oh, so basically I filled these areas here overnight and it sands off pretty quick and we're outside so it won't take me two minutes. <laughs> As you can see now, these are sanded off. Uh, they're ready for uh, paint, uh, which is going to be um, uh, coming up in the next episode. And uh, because these are the original ones, the um, the bottoms, for example, as you can see, fairly fragile, and I think uh, they will spelch off. Um, so what I've decided to do is to use after they've been painted and protect some of these edges as well. Um, I mean obviously you don't know what the final colour is yet so I'm going to just trim these um, edges uh, with a nice bit of um, aluminium strip and also to protect the lower edge. They'll also have it 
down there. And on the backs, like so. The only place, of course, they won't have them is at the front. But that's got a nice edge anyway. And then, of course, I'll have to create and make a door to go on there. I'm not so sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but uh, that's not far. So, anyway, that's it. So, I think we shall call that episode a wrap. I apologise, like I said, that it's taken so long to get this one out. Um, but we are back to, for, um, to uh, doing these episodes on a regular basis. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for waiting for the next one to come along. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye for now.